In this short video, I'm going to assume that you're an educated Christian, you have a college degree, and you've been trained to think logically and rationally about the world we live in. For example, you might be an engineer or scientist, a doctor, pharmacist, or nurse, a teacher, a manager or an administrator, a government employee, a business owner, an account rep, an executive, a lawyer, an accountant, a person working in the financial sector or human resources, an architect or designer, a software developer. In other words, you're a smart person. You know how the world works and you know how to think critically. If you're an educated Christian, I would like to talk with you today about an important and interesting question. Have you ever thought about using your college education to think about your faith? Your life and your career demand that you behave and act rationally. Let's apply your critical thinking skills as we discuss 10 simple questions about your religion. Here's an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. As a Christian, you believe in the power of prayer. According to a recent poll, Three out of four doctors believe that God is performing medical miracles on earth right now. Most Christians believe that God is curing cancers, healing diseases, reversing the effects of poison, and so on. So here's question one. Why won't God heal amputees? It's a simple question, isn't it? We all know that amputated legs do not spontaneously regenerate in response to prayer. Amputees get no miracles from God. If you're an intelligent person, you have to admit that this is an interesting question. On the one hand, you believe that God answers prayers and performs miracles. On the other hand, you know that God completely ignores amputees when they pray for miracles. How do you deal with this discrepancy? As an intelligent person, you have to deal with it because it makes no sense. In order to handle it, notice that you have to create some kind of rationalization. You have to invent an excuse on God's behalf to explain this strange fact of life. You might say, well, God must have some kind of special plan for amputees. So you invent your excuse, whatever it is, and then you stop thinking about it because it's uncomfortable. Here's another example. As a Christian, you believe that God cares about you and answers your prayers. So the second question is, why are there so many starving people in our world? Look out at our world and notice that millions of children are dying of starvation. It really is horrific. Why would God be worried about you getting a raise while at the same time ignoring the prayers of these desperate, innocent little children? It doesn't make sense, does it? Why would a loving God do this? To explain it, you have to come up with some kind of very strange excuse for God. Like, God wants these children to suffer and die for some divine, mysterious reason. Then you push it out of your mind because it absolutely does not fit with your view of a loving, caring God. Third question. Why does God demand the death of so many innocent people in the Bible? Look up these verses. Exodus 35, 2. God demands that we kill everyone who works on the Sabbath day. Deuteronomy chapter 21. God demands that we kill disobedient teenagers. Leviticus 20. God demands the death of homosexuals. Deuteronomy chapter 22. God demands that we kill girls who are not virgins when they marry. And so on. There are lots of verses like these. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Why would a loving God want us to murder our fellow human beings over such trivial matters? Just because you work on the wrong day of the week, you must die? That makes no sense, does it? In fact, if you think about it, you realize that it's insane. So you create some kind of rationalization to explain these verses. Question 4. Why does the Bible contain so much anti-scientific nonsense? You have a college degree, so you know what I'm talking about. You know how science works. You happily use the products of science every day. Your car, your cell phone, your microwave oven, your TV, your computer. These are all products of the scientific process. You know that science is incredibly important to our economy and to our lives. But there's a problem. As an educated person, you know that the Bible contains all sorts of information that's total nonsense from a scientific perspective. God did not create the world in six days, 6,000 years ago, like the Bible says. There was never a worldwide flood that covered Mount Everest, like the Bible says. Jonah did not live inside a fish's stomach for three days, like the Bible says. God did not create Adam from a handful of dust, like the Bible says. These stories are all nonsense. Why would an all-knowing God write nonsense? It makes no sense, does it? 
So you create some type of very strange excuse to try to explain why the Bible contains total nonsense. Question 5. Why is God such a huge proponent of slavery in the Bible? And why do all intelligent people abhor slavery and make it completely illegal? You have to come up with some kind of weird rationalization to explain it. Question 6. Why do bad things happen to good people? It makes no sense. You've created an exotic excuse on God's behalf to rationalize it. Question 7. Why didn't any of Jesus' miracles in the Bible leave behind any evidence? It's very strange, isn't it? You've created an excuse to rationalize it. Question number 8. How do we explain the fact that Jesus has never appeared to you? Jesus is all-powerful and timeless, but if you pray for Jesus to appear, nothing happens. You have to create a weird rationalization to deal with this discrepancy. Question 9. Why would Jesus want you to eat his body and drink his blood? It sounds totally grotesque, doesn't it? Why would an all-powerful God want you to do something that, in any other context, sounds like a disgusting, cannibalistic, satanic ritual? And finally, question number 10. Why do Christians get divorced at the same rate as non-Christians? Christians get married in front of God and their Christian friends, all of whom are praying to God for the marriage to succeed. And then they say, What God has put together, let no man put asunder. God is all-powerful, so if God has put two people together, that should seal the deal, shouldn't it? Yet Christians get divorced at the same rate as everyone else. To explain this, you have to create some kind of convoluted rationalization. So, we've looked at ten fascinating questions. In order to believe in God, you've had to create all sorts of strange rationalizations and excuses. If you're an intelligent, college-educated person, all of these excuses and rationalizations probably make you uncomfortable. If you think about it honestly, using your critical thinking skills that you've learned in college, you have to admit that your answers to these questions make no sense at all. Now, let me show you something remarkable. What if you instead assume that God's imaginary? A funny thing happens. The answers to every one of these questions make complete sense. Just look at all ten questions as an intelligent person would. Why won't God heal amputees? Because God is imaginary and he doesn't answer any prayers. Every answered prayer is actually a coincidence. All scientific evidence supports this conclusion. Why are there so many starving people in our world? Because God is imaginary and he's therefore unable to answer their prayers. Why does God demand the death of so many innocent people in the Bible? Because God is imaginary and the Bible was actually written by ridiculous, ruthless men rather than any sort of all-loving being. Why does the Bible contain so much anti-scientific nonsense? Ditto. Primitive men wrote the Bible, not an all-knowing being. Why is God such a huge proponent of slavery? Ditto. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because God is imaginary and bad things happen at the same statistical rates to everyone. Why didn't any of Jesus' miracles in the Bible leave behind any evidence? Because God is imaginary and Jesus' miracles are myths. How do we explain the fact that Jesus has never appeared to you? Because God is imaginary. Why would Jesus want you to eat his body and drink his blood? Because God is imaginary and this bizarre ritual came from a pagan religion. Why do Christians get divorced at the same rate as non-Christians? Because God is imaginary. Do you see what has happened here? When we assume that God exists, the answers to these ten questions make absolutely no sense. But if we assume that God is imaginary, our world makes complete sense. It's interesting, isn't it? Actually, it's more than interesting. It's incredibly important. Our world only makes sense when you understand that God is imaginary. This is how intelligent, rational people know that God is imaginary. When you use your brain and when you think logically about your religious faith, you can reach only one possible conclusion. The God that you have heard about since you were an infant is completely imaginary. You have to willfully discard rationality and accept hundreds of bizarre rationalizations to believe in your God. Now, let me ask you one last question. Why should you care? What difference does it make if people want to believe in a God even if he is imaginary? It matters because people who believe in imaginary beings are delusional. It matters because people who talk to imaginary beings are delusional. 
It matters because people who believe in imaginary superstitions like prayer are delusional. It's that simple and that obvious. Your religious beliefs hurt you personally and hurt us as a species because they are delusional. The belief in any God is complete nonsense. You're a smart person. It's time for you to use your intelligence to free yourself from these delusions. It's time for you to begin thinking like a rational human being rather than clinging to imaginary friends and childhood fantasies. Would you like to learn more? Please visit WhyWon'tGodHealAmputees.com. Thank you for your time today.